Hello, I'm artist Sean Rutke, and welcome to the Speaking From Water podcast, the podcast that introduces you to photographers and artists around the world who specialize in creating work from and in the ocean. Today we travel to Japan, where we meet Pedro Gomes, a world-famous editorial photographer who specializes in swimming in large surf and capturing his subject matter there. Join us now. Cool. All right. Well, um, let's yeah. get started. So, uh, Pedro, this is our, our second podcast that I'm, I'm doing. Uh, it's called Speaking from Water. And the objective here is to bring enlightenment uh, to those who don't know about the power of water and um, what it is that, that you've seen out there in the ocean and, and uh, how it is um, just one of those most, the most incredible things um, to experience. And um, before I get started with, uh, with you and, and your history and how you got to be where you are today, I want to ask you a little bit about where you are, uh, your location on the planet, um, your home beach, and what it is uh, that makes your home beach so world-class and so special. Well, I, I live in Japan for 20 years. But uh, right now I'm living in Chiba. I moved to Chiba like uh, four years ago, four years and a half ago. I moved from another province, Shizuoka, that was in the middle of Japan and Chiba is a little bit north. And uh, it's next to Tokyo. And uh, there are several surf spots here. It's like uh, the coastline is, is a huge coastline. And uh, we have all kind of waves. And uh, the most well-known one is like uh, where the, is going to be held the Olympic Games, uh, Shidashita. Shidashita is like uh, 25 minutes driving away from where I am. Like uh, if you think in miles, it's going to be like uh, 13, 12 miles away. But uh, miles in Japan, you know, it's not like in the U.S., like, uh, you know, 13 miles here is a lot because the traffic is so slow. The roads are very, very small and very, and very tight. So 13 miles here in the countryside yeah, is going to take you like a, like a 25 minutes driving. But uh, besides Shidad, you know, we have like a, we have a lot of reef breaks we have so many secret spots that uh, the locals they keep in secret you know and but uh, we have like a long board waves we have a good place for like a foil foiling surfing like a, i can say chiba has it all you know you can do like a knee knee high long board waves like a single thing and uh in the morning and uh in the evening, you can be like uh, surfing like uh, outside the reef, like uh, 12 or 15 foot waves. So it's amazing. Super incredible. Uh, so tell me more about the location of the Olympic um, uh, surfing contest at the beach. Is it a, um, uh, what, what, what can we expect as far as wave quality, uh, the type of, of wave we're gonna see um, during that time of year? What, what, are, what are your anticipations? Well, I think uh, Shida is like uh, is one of my favorite beach breaks, like in Japan. It's like a yeah, it's a standout beach break. You know, the wave is kind of fast, so you know, uh, it's it's not a very good place for beginners, or you know, if you are not fast enough, or it's not a good place for long boarding. It's very the wave is really fast. It, it, it's very sucky. Pitch. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, um, and like uh, it's, it's very good for short boards and body boards as well. I like to body surf in there. And uh, how can I say? It's a very like a high high performance wave. You know, if if you guys like uh, if you can do like uh, airs and you know and uh, and if you can go fast in the wave, you stand out. But uh, the only concern I have is that uh, the Olympics is going to be held in summer. And summer is kind of really tricky for getting swells there. 
it's better it's much better like a winter and uh autumn and uh early spring because you get this swell from you get a, like a wind swells and you get a, like a low pressure like a low pressure swells you know are this is are the same swells that are goes from japan to hawaii that are bring the waves to hawaii but in summer you know is is really tricky because if even if you have a typhoon she that doesn't hold doesn't hold like anything like a maximum like a overhead like a three to like a five foot okay let's say six foot californium you know, it doesn't hold more than that. So, and if you get a typhoon, you know, you don't have like a middle term, you know, you have like, or you have like a really huge waves or you have nothing, you know, so. So, so in summer can be, it could be in summer flat. can be tricky. It, it, we, they could almost be skunked. Yeah, that was my, that's my concern. Like uh, last year, it was supposed to happen the Olympics, but uh, it didn't happen because of due the COVID and the Olympic. Everybody knows got it, got it canceled. But uh, I was doing a report there, like a daily report for Surfline. Do you I know saw that on the internet? We were, yes. Yeah, yeah. So you do you know, but uh, even you know, a lot of stuff didn't go to the internet. Like uh, I was doing like a daily report for them. Uh, how it would be if the Olympic uh, happened. And then uh, in the seven, like six days or seven days, the waiting period, like uh, two days were surfable, two days and a half. Wow. And, uh, you know, and uh, there are like a five days, four days and a half there. And, you know, if it happened the Olympics that it just didn't have any condition at all. So my point of view is like, uh, they should have a plan B as a, or a second beach or, or a wave pool or something. Is there a wave pool nearby? They were pretending to build the one. It's like, uh, but uh, I think they just canceled. It was supposed to be a Kelly Slater one. Like, uh, that's what I heard, like, uh, from the guys who are involved, but uh, they didn't got uh, enough financial support for make it happen. And uh, there is another province, the place where I used to live before, Shizuoka. They have, uh, they just made a pool there. The same company who made the pool in Korea, in South Korea, but it's not big and good as the South Korean one. Mm. It hasn't opened yet to the public, but uh, I, have, I have been there checking the, the, the size and, the, and the, the things around. And I had the report from some friends who are involved on this project. And uh, it's the same system as the South Korean swimming, the surfing pool. In, in which kind but, of uh, system is that? that good. I, I think it, well, now you got me. I, I, I don't know which one, but it's the same company who built the, the one in South Korea. Uh, I don't know if you have you seen on internet or photos from that, from the Korean one. I haven't seen that, but I'll check like, it out. It looks out. really... Yeah, it's, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not so good as Kelly Slater's one, but it's kind of good. But uh, the Japanese one, the Japanese version is smaller. So I don't think you know is is gonna be good enough for the Olympics. For the Olympics. That's yes. my, my, yeah. That's that's my opinion. Well, well, let's uh, let's pray to the the ocean god and Poseidon that the uh, the the waves come through for the Olympics for for all of our sakes. And uh, before yeah. we move on, I, I like I like your comment on uh, who who are you um, uh, thinking is is the favorite? I know you spent a lot of time in Hawaii and you're uh, uh, you know big fans of John John. Do you see him going? To, to take the gold, uh, what do you see? Wow, I think uh, the Olympics is going to be similar, the world tour, like uh, I think like a John John 
think he's killing right now. You know, it's I. I he's if he's one hundred percent, if he's one hundred percent, you know, I never mind the kind of wave. You know, it's it's a guy to beat. I think. Totally. But uh, and the Brazilian guys, like it's going to be like a Brazil is like a, a Gabriel Gabriel and uh, and Italo. And uh, in Brazil, we have a lot of pitch breaks, you know, in small waves. So he so might have the advantage there. They ha they have some advantage there, but uh, John John also surfs a lot, like a small rock point, small uh, air hook guy, just in front of his home. So I don't know. Good. And uh, this yeah, and besides that, we have like uh, the Japanese guy Kanoa. He's also very good in small waves you know he grew up surfing california you know california uh i think it's very similar to japan the conditions you know it is yeah you gotta like a few epic days in the year but uh, the everyday surf is like a average waves beach break so Long i think kind of ocean is, swell yeah, yeah and uh, yeah exactly excellent excellent well uh I would like to get some um, commentary on on your life and and how you got to to be who you are and and what you're doing today. For those of um, uh, of you listening, uh, Pedro is an amazing photographer. His work on Instagram and on the internet is just phenomenal. You should go check it out. Uh, uh, PedroGomes.com is that correct? PedroGomesPhoto.com. Yeah. Pedro Gomez photo. Pedro Gomez photo dot com. Perfect, perfect. And um, yeah. so uh, let let's um let's start. You're you're from Brazil. You grew up in Brazil. What what was it about um uh your your upbringing that that drove you to the ocean? Do you remember a, a certain time when you grew up that you're like, wow, this is uh this is very uh, amazing to me. Well, since I know myself, uh, I like to be in the water. Like, uh, never mind if it's surfing, you know, whatever. You know, I like to be in the water. And still now, like, uh, to me, it's very hard to do any kind of sport that is not related to water. So being in the water is, is my passion. And uh, it's hard to explain. It's just, you know, attracts me. I just feel I want to be in the water. And, uh, well, I was born in South Brazil uh, in a city called Porto Alegre. We don't, have, uh, we don't have a beach there. We just have a river. And the closest beach is like a one hour driving away. So it's not that far. It's not that bad. So what happened is that, uh, uh, fortunately, my family had a... Uh, beach house, like uh, two hours driving away from the city. So my mother, who is a, she's, she's a swimmer, she swim a lot, and she also likes to be on the beach all the time. And so every single holiday, weekends, or, you know, the summer and, and uh, even winter holidays, you know, we go to the beach. So that was the happiest time of my, of my childhood, you know, like I stay waiting like a whole, whole week to can go to the beach on the weekends or I, I wait a, a lot for the summer holidays because the summer holidays in, back, in my, back in the days was like a two or three months holiday from the school. So it was like a two, three months on the beach, it's like a, didn't need to go back to the city so yeah that's how I started to enjoy the beach like uh, since I know myself like uh, my mother teaches me how to swim and uh, I, I always enjoyed like uh, swimming clubs where I learned to swim and uh, I didn't compete because I'm, I'm not tall enough but anyway I was taking all the all the training for be a good swimmer and uh, since the first time when my mother took me to swim in the ocean, like uh, maybe I was six or seven, like uh, she invited me, hey, do you know, you are swimming well now. So 
already. So what about if we go from this beach to the next beach and we have to cross, it's like a, maybe like a, a mile or 1.5 mile. And then, uh, you know, if your mom is telling you that, you know, and the flat seed, you know, I, I, you know, if mom is saying, you know, why not? You know, you feel super safety. So I think uh, this uh, time I spend with her, my childhood was very important to, to me feel comfortable. And then uh, surf came a little bit later. I think I got a, I used to play like a soft board in the beginning when I was like a very little, but uh, not the soft board as uh, the guys have now that it looks like a very super nice board. It was like a 1984, 1985 in Brazil it was kind of a cooler box with a, with a surfboard shape. I don't know how you call that one. A styrofoam. And then, yeah, kind of. And then, uh, and then uh, I think I got my very first surfboard when I was seven my parents they gave me a surfboard and uh but it wasn't like a for a child it was kind of a long board to me you know they got like a second hand from someone and uh and then i started to join surfing but i wasn't that good at surf you know I, i'm not a good uh i mean i could surf but you know i wasn't like a standout guy and then uh, when I was like uh, 12, I grabbed uh, the bodyboard from my, from my young brother. And uh, I felt so comfortable in the bodyboard, you know, because, you know, it's, it's very close to body surfing and you are very connected to the ocean. And uh, I didn't need to, to care much about balance as a surfboard. And uh, that was like a 1990s or before or something like that. The bodyboard was going so popular in Brazil. You know, we had like, we didn't have any surfer world champion back at that time, but we had some bodyboard world champions already in the 98s, 99s. And then uh, I started to bodyboard and, you know, and, uh, I never stop it. Excellent. So where then did photography come in and at what point before you, you made the, the journey out of Brazil? Did you do photography in Brazil? No, because I left Brazil very young. I left Brazil when I was 19. I moved to Australia. So professionally, I started like a, my first... Uh, my first time like uh, working in the professional environment was in Australia. But in Brazil, since I know myself, I like to take cameras, you know, like uh, my family, we used to have a old Nikon 35 millimeters film. And uh, my mother uh, teach me how to use the camera, you know, how to put the film and uh, how to measure the light and how to the speed of course she didn't use these words she teach me like a for a child can understand but you know back in the days it wasn't digital you know so you cannot waste film a lot so i learned how to use the camera and i always like uh, bring a camera with me and snap some photos of my friends uh yeah snapping photos of friends and of my my girlfriend and then uh i always felt interesting about it but i, I didn't had the opportunity to work when i was young in brazil i never had to think about it actually and uh when i moved to australia uh i have an uncle who is a photographer who was a professional photographer and uh he was an inspiration but also he he had a photo studio in Sydney, a big, a huge photo studio. And then uh, I started to work there first as just as a part-time job, you know, just to help to pay my English school. 
but uh, I wasn't like, oh, I want to be a photographer or, you know, I didn't, I didn't think that far. You know, I was more concerned about uh, like I uh, had some money to help to pay my studies and uh, and uh, go to the beach for bodyboarding. You know, that's what I... And where in Australia was, was this? Was in Sydney, Australia. So yeah, I lived, uh, I lived in a very, very small beach called the Clovelly. It is like a between uh, Bondi and and uh, and the uh, Coogee Beach. They're kind of well known. Yep. Yeah, it's the same coast as you know. If you go deeper, you know, uh, uh, you you will see Marubra. Awesome. So that the area, yeah, it's a, it's a very good area. So you're in Australia for this time period. What is it that gets you to Japan? So I lived in Australia for like a two years, over two years, and uh, then I met a Japanese girl there. And then like I felt in love and, you know, and I was, I had a student visa in Australia, so, but uh, I, I stopped to study. So, you know, like I had, or, you know, or you start to study again, or you go to, you know, you know, you need, you need what are you going to do? And I was for two years, you know, in Australia, and uh, I love, I like Australia very much, but uh, I don't know, I never felt that, oh man, I want to be here forever or something, you know, like, uh, you know, so I, I decided to go back to, 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 to Brazil, and then uh, the, the girl, she was my girlfriend, you know, like, you know let's get married, and then uh, she came to Brazil with me, and then we, we live there for like uh, eight months, but she never could like, uh, like uh, live fine in Brazil. And she started to say, oh, I want to go back to Japan. I want to go back to Japan. And then I was, uh, what I do? And, you know, okay, so let's try it out. So I moved to Japan with her. And then uh, after some time, uh, we got divorced. But... Uh, I decided to keep living in Japan and then I'm here until now. Beautiful. So you're, you're now in Japan, but you you haven't started the, the, the surf photography, um, yet. Is that, is that where we are? Yeah. Yeah. No, surf ph photography came very late, uh, in my life because I was working as a photographer in Sydney already. You know, actually, in the studio I used to work with, there are a couple of guys who are who are into surf photography, and they invite me. You know, like, hey, Pedro, you know, uh, why we don't go together? You know, uh, you are a good swimmer. You can take photos of surfing. You know, but uh, you know, it was like a, my my day off. Man, you know, I don't want to see a camera my day off. You know, I just want to surf. You know, I I don't I don't want you guys taking photo of me or I. You know, I didn't have. You know, that was 1998. So, you know, we still didn't film. have like a Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, it's still film. Yeah, it's still film. The digitals were still starting to come in, but uh, it wasn't like a, they weren't good enough for work professionally. Like until 2004, I guess, 2002. So anyway, my... Like I work at so many different fields of photography, you know, like I did a lot of uh, fashion, I did weddings, I did the products, I did even like a, like a, like a chick, uh, like a food, like a, everything that is related to commercial photographer, you know, because it was like a, a big studio. So we take all kinds of jobs from, from a MasterCard visa campaign to like a big weddings. Uh, well, like uh, electronics, uh, car shooting, you know, we do, we do it all. And uh, all these markets have much more money than surfing involved. So, you know, back in the, back in the time, you know, I think, hey, you know, why should I take four of something? I'm going to get less money, you know, that just doesn't make sense. So that's, so I never had to think about it to be a surf photographer. I never had to think about it, you know, me as a good swell for taking photos of someone else. So when did this start? 
the surf photography and what was it that started it? So, okay. So once I came to Japan, uh, I was shooting professionally already. I had a good portfolio as a commercial photographer, but uh, I, I couldn't like uh, the barrier of the language like uh, the, the, uh, the language, I couldn't speak any Japanese. It was so tough to me to get a job as a photographer here. And also uh, Japan is, 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 is a difficult country in many ways, you know, for, for foreigners, you know, like uh, when you think about, you know, foreigners, like uh, there are few workplaces for foreigners here, you know, or you are an English teacher, or you are, sorry, let me You're put good. in the silence mode. Yeah. So in Japan, you know, like I, or you are like an English teacher or you come from like a work in a, some factory, like a, to be like a, like a heavy work, you know, works that a Japanese does, don't want to do. Or you are like a, a CEO for some big company, you know. There is not much options, you know, outside from these three. So every, even these days now, you know, if I go in a bank to open an account, they ask, what's your job? Are you an English teacher or do you work in a factory? Do you know, it's, no, I'm a photographer. They all, oh, it's like, a, you know, it's like, a, it's kind of unusual here. It's getting better now, but back when I got here, it was 2001. It was like a very, very few options for foreigners, especially where I was when I got here. I got in near Kyoto. It's more, it's more Japanese, you know, it's more countryside than if you compare with the Tokyo area where I am now. Sorry, <laughs> getting so many messages on my, on my... Oh, you're You're a busy man. Yeah, it's a magazine guy selling me some stuff. Sick. But anyway, uh, anyway, so I couldn't get a position as a photographer in the beginning. And uh, but anyway, I, I had to I had to make my living. You know, like I I was married with the girl, and we had a kid at the time. So, yeah, so, you know, I had to I have to, you know, just to, to support my family. So I started to work like a, I, my first job here was like a Brazilian restaurant. And then I, I worked with a, for, a, for a factory, like a very hard job. But at the same time, I, I keep doing like a, studying Japanese hard by myself and taking classes. So I could uh, change my position, you know, like a, from a regular, like a work, like a, a guy who has to work, like using the, your body, your muscles, like I could uh, achieve some level inside the company I was working and I had a position and uh, I was very well paid actually. And it was a stable job and I have a family and I was kind of, you know, satisfied you know like I, I would go surfing weekends and you know I I got a I got, I got a good job especially you know if you think a foreigner in Brazil I had a I was and then uh and then uh came the the market crash the crash in the markets in 2008 so I had to change the job to a smaller company because of their purpose was better. So I was working for them. And when the, when the markets collapsed in 2008, I, the company just uh, finished. It was, the company was, uh, went bankrupt and I lost my job. And uh, I felt that sensation so bad, you know, like, uh, 
Hey, do you know, so if someone, you know, decide what is going to happen, you know, with my life, you know, like uh, if there is no money or if the markets go down, you know, I lose my job and, you know, I didn't, I never had to felt like that way in my life before, you know, like uh, I felt kind of weak. And then I said, you know, uh, I want to, the only thing I, I, I know how to do well is taking photos, you know. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to go back to photography. So, you know, so if I fail, it's going to be of my own fault. You know, if I don't succeed because, you know, I'm not a good photographer enough. I don't sell my job good enough, you know, so that's what I'm going to do. And then uh, I, I, I never had to touch a digital camera yet. That time it was 2008. So I was still like a film guy and all went to digital. You know, I had like a gap, like a few years away and it just changed everything. So like the photographies that I used to pay really well in the past, like uh, wedding photography or whatever, you know, any commercial photography, especially when you are in the starting level, the the money wasn't, wasn't attractive. It wasn't like a good, you know? So th that's the time I used to live, I moved to, to Shizuoka. I used to live in front of the beach. And then uh, I say, hey, why I don't try surf photography then? Because in Japan, uh, the, the magazines, like uh, the published media is, uh, is it still uh, stable? Less, much less than before, got smaller. But if I compare to other countries, uh, it's still, you know, there are so many magazines here. Not only surfing, like a fashion, uh, cars, fishing, whatever. The print media is still kind of strong here. In 2009, 2008, when I started, it was even stronger. And uh, there are not so many Japanese uh, able to swim in the water like uh, during big swells. And uh, I found that, hey, you know, uh, I never hold, I never swim with a camera, but I always swim with a bodyboard or, you know, be, be, a, be swimming, you know, being big waves, you know, that's something, you know, I, I do since, since little. So why I don't try this? And then, uh, I started taking photos, uh, surf photos in Japan. That's, that's how everything started. Incredible, incredible story. And it has so many elements of an entrepreneur to it. Artist as the entrepreneur. Uh, you, you are making your own in this world with surf photography. And that's just an incredible uh, thing to do. Uh, let me follow up on one thing. So you, you went straight to the water. As, as a water photographer, as opposed to shooting land surfing? Is this, is this do I have this correctly? No, I like, uh, I had, uh, I had both like a very simple set. I remember it was like a Nikon D80 and I had a few lenses. And uh, once I decided for go for surfing, first I had uh, like a, a big, uh, a big lens, I, I bought a cheap one. Uh, it was a Sigma, like a 100, 150, 500. This was my first lens for shooting surfing. But uh, I never had to stop to think about surf photography. And but once when I decided to go on it, like, uh, hey, you know, it's like, uh, I have to be good on it. So I started to do research so I could find where to get a uh, water housing. That's, you know, that's uh, when I started to go to Hawaii, you know, because all the best photographers are in Hawaii, you know, like, uh, and especially Japanese, they love so much uh, Hawaii and uh, they respect so much, like uh, if you are good at uh, taking photos at pipeline. So, looking now, you know, it's kind of innocent, but that's how the way I think that time, you know, hey, you know, I make the water housing, 
I go to Hawaii, I swim, I swim at pipe, I take some forests and everybody will like me. That was my, <laughs> that was my, my plan in the beginning. And then uh, somehow things work, not the, the way I told it was, it was going to be, but uh, somehow it worked in the end. So it, it's 2008, you get your, uh, your first water housing in that same year, is this right? Yeah, and after then, I got on my digital camera, very soon I got a, a second camera and then uh, I, I, I made my first water housing. And then that following winter- and since then I didn't stop. Beautiful, and then that, that following winter you go straight to Hawaii, is this, is this true? Yeah, I, no, I, my first, my first winter in Hawaii was 2010, 2011. Okay. Yeah, so because I didn't have money to go in the, in, the, in the first one. I had just had, I had lost my job and I, just, and I bought a camera gear and housing. So I had to save some money to go to Hawaii first. So you spent about two years getting your chops together as far as your, your skills in the water shooting. And, uh, and then it's 2010, 2011, and you, you book a trip to Hawaii. This is your first time to Hawaii. That was my first time to Hawaii. So you, you get to Hawaii, and I'm sure you're just blown away. Oh, yeah. I got in Hawaii, I remember, like a, a guy. Uh, back in 2010, I still used to bodyboard a lot. Like uh, I used to bodyboard like uh, like uh, almost every day. It was very hard to me, you know, in the beginning to be a surf photographer because when the waves are pumping, you know, I I don't want to, you know, I want to be taking photos. You know, I want to be not I want to be in the forest, but I want to be surfing. I want to be boarding boarding, you know. It, so it, it's the a big dilemma. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was like a very, you know, was very tough in the beginning. So when I first, well, the first time when I got in Hawaii, uh, I remember one guy went to pick, to pick me up and then, then we drive in the Kamehama Highway. Uh, like, oh, uh, here is pipeline, you know, but that's your first time in, in Hawaii, you know, just don't jump at pipeline because it's different from anything else. You know, it's, please start it slowly, you know, if you are going shooting or if you are going bodyboarding or anything. And I say, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And the next day, uh, the swell was rising and, you know, I stopped at pipe. And I saw the waves on fire and I said, no, wait, I'm going to wait. I just grabbed my bodyboard and don't jump in the water. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, it was like, a, so my first, I have to say, you know, my first two, three seasons, I was like uh, more bodyboarding than actually taking forwards. You know, I just couldn't hold myself. <laughs> But uh, yeah, change it later, change it later. When, uh, I think it was like a 2013, uh, I was like a rock point with a fisheye and I got a photo of Lake Peterson and uh, they were making her movie like uh, for Nike and uh, the, the film, uh, the director, when he saw me uh, taking the photo for her, he asked me, hey, do you, did you take her photo you know, inside the barrel? I said, oh yeah, I got her photo. I got a lake's, lake's photo inside the barrel. And then he said, ah, oh, we are making her movie. You know, we need some photos to, to the movie promotion. So we will contact you for the photo. And then uh, after, after some time, uh, they contact me and uh, eh, we want to use the for uh, for the the movie promotion. So, so okay, so they paid me something like uh, I never had. A, I think I had. A, I was going to to earn in a surf for it was like a close to thousand in the total of the because it was for so many different usages. 
So yeah, so you know, like, uh, well, you know, there is something here, you know, maybe I take it more serious. And uh, also I was over 30, 30 years old already. I was 30 something, maybe 32, 33. And then, hey, you know, it's like, uh, let's do it for, for serious now. And th since then I started to give more focus on surf photography. Incredible. Yeah, so your, your Instagram feed is full of just amazing water shots. And I recommend everyone uh, go check it out. I'll have a link in this, um, in this video here. But your, um, your inside the barrel shots of the surfer coming out are just incredibly hard to pull off. And I, I would like to um, have you talk a little bit about what is your, um, your approach, your style, your technique to getting in the, the correct position for such uh, incredible points of view. Well, I think it's uh, it's all related uh, on how you read the wave. You know, after some time, uh, you you don't know you see the what kind of wave you see the current you see the weather, you see the light. The light is very important, and you choose the right uh, gear to go in the water. Right now, like, uh, you know, uh, I have like uh, the, all the best gear possible in the market. Like I have a very good water housing. I have, uh, I have more than one water house. I have like a three water housings and I have a, like a, uh, several lenses for, for shooting, like a, from fish eye to 70 to 100, you know, I have it all. The, 2470, the 28 millimeters, the 14 millimeters, like a wide angle, the 50, uh, 135. Well, I have, I have many. I have all, all maybe a very uh, big range of possibilities. So I think like a, you, you, you need to, to read, you know, the, the conditions of the ocean, uh, the light, the current, you know, and also the number of photographers in the lineup, you know, so you make the right decision in what you use, in the, you know, in, uh, in, in the day. It took me a while to, to achieve this level. Because you know it's all about you know you go out and try, try once and you know and uh, when you go back and you check your photos and you see what worked what didn't work. Sometimes you can get a good result on things that uh, you have no, you hadn't think before going the water, but you can figure out. So yeah, it's it's all related to the condition and the day. And so, uh, would you say that that pipeline is your favorite spot to swim and shoot on the North Shore? Yeah, definitely. Not only not only in the North Shore, but uh, I think uh, it's my favorite. It's my favorite uh, wave in, that I have been. There are some places that I really want to go, but I haven't been yet. But uh, from the places I have been in my life, Pipe is so far my favorite. It's where I spend more time, more than anywhere else in Japan, more than anywhere else in Hawaii. Uh, I spend a lot. I spend some time there as a, a bodyboarder. And now as a photographer, every single time that a pipe is good, I'm shooting pipe. So... I put a lot of time. Can you tell? Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the aesthetics there and what it is about pipe in particular that that you love so much? Well, the the wave is so photogenic. The wave is so photogenic, and uh, it's always super challenging because you know uh, there are so, you know when you when people talk about pipeline you know there are so many pipelines you know depending on swell on wind on tide you know so at the same place you know you get, you can get so many different kind of photos and uh, 
other aspect about pipelines, like uh, the level of the surface there. You know, everybody who is surfing pipeline is a pro or a semi-pro or, a, you know, is a world-class surfer. So I don't think that is nowhere else in the world that you can see so many good surfers together at the same place with such a good wave. And when you shoot pipe, what is your, your favorite equipment setup? Uh, or does it, again, depend upon what pipe is doing? It really depends where pipe is doing. It's like, uh, you know, if, if, it's, uh, if it's like a really glassy pipeline, like uh, until eight foot, you know, it's, and, in the, and if the light's good, uh, fish eye is a good call. Fish eye is a good call. And, uh, but uh, when pipeline turns like uh, 12, 15 foot, you know, with a fish eye, it will be very hard. I have tried, but uh, you know, like uh, I, I had, but you know, you score maybe couple of good photos and if you go with a different lens like a, a 7200 you can stay back a little bit and you know it's it's not that much but uh, you know it's like a five meters but it, it makes all the difference in, in the channel there pipe you kind of sit in the nook shoot down the, the line and it's a lot safer than being in that crucial impact exactly zone. Yeah, yeah, but it's tricky, you know. Sometimes even when you are in the channel, can be really tricky, you know. Some some waves sometimes break, you know, in the in the channel, depend on the swell and the current. Sometimes pull you straight to the, you know, under the under the peak. So, but definitely, you know, if it's not a fish eye, you know, if you are using a fifty or a seventy two hundred. You can get more uh, more photos than a fish eye. You know, in the end of the day, you are going to have much uh, much more photos than shooting for fish eye. But uh, it depends a lot. You know, like uh, it's it's how can I say? Uh, besides the seven to two hundred, you know, uh, you can use the twenty four seventy. So you can you can be close, really close to the action, and uh, you you don't have a risk to lose like uh, the bottom of the wave, because sometimes with the tide, you can lose like uh, the bottom of the wave if you are so far you know in the in the channel, and uh, it depends also what you wanna do you know like. Uh, like uh, I, I love to shooting with the 50. Set up for a pipeline, you know, I think it's all depending on the day and the, on the conditions. Incredible. So, well, uh... Again, Hawaii is, is just uh, the, the, the mecca of, of the universe of surf, surfing and surf photography. It's also extremely uh, sketchy and dangerous to do all this, this, um, this work. Um, can you speak to a particular moment in time where maybe you bit off more than you could chew in the water and um, uh, something uh, happened or it was a uh, particularly um, scary and interesting experience? Uh, maybe a, a little story you could embark upon us. Yeah, well, I had a very big uh, accident in pipeline on, in 2012. Like, uh, it wasn't that big, but uh, suddenly come with a uh, uh, washout, like a, like a big set, and everybody got it just washed. And I, wa I was shooting with a fish eye. And uh, during I was like uh, under the water, uh, a surfboard from nowhere just came with the nose and perforated my shin so yeah it was really painful like uh and uh you know it's like a one of maybe the biggest pain i had felt in my life and i just couldn't move my 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 leg 
and with the camera, you know, and, and uh, it was my right leg. I couldn't move it because of too much pain. And I can see all the blood around my body. And, uh, you know, it was like uh, all the mess because everybody got in washed. So many guys in the inside, many guys in the outside. And uh, didn't have nobody to ask for help or anything, you know. The, the only thing I had to do is like uh, try to swim to the shore by myself. And that's what I did. And uh, luckily, I could make to the to the shore, and then the lifeguard come and help me. Yeah, that was very, very intense. And uh, yeah, you have to look out all the time. And and you always wear a helmet in the water when you're shooting. Is this right? At pipe, yeah, I try. I try to wear a helmet. I, I, I you sometimes like uh, when I forget the helmet, I did, I did, I don't use it. But uh, I try to don't forget it, like, uh, but uh, and use the helmet. But other other surface spots, like uh, it depends, you know. Uh, when it's very crowded, never mind how big the waves are. I, I like to wear a helmet. Not because of the wave, but you know, if there is a fin or something. But uh, yeah, because w once you, you use the helmet also, you know, you can't hear well because it covers your ears. So you lose, and also, you know, it's, it's not so comfortable. Like I, it's, I feel better when they're not using a helmet, but yeah, I, I do recommend a helmet. If you're going to swim at pipe, I do recommend you to wear a helmet. Awesome. So uh, to, to do all this activity, you, you must be uh, in incredible shape. Can you speak to kind of your lifestyle, maybe your training regimen, what it is that, uh, that you do personally on a, maybe a daily basis to um, maintain uh, the ability to, um, to swim at pipe? You know, you're not there all year, but when you show up, you need to be ready. So what is it uh, about your life that makes you able to do that? Well, uh, as I said before, I've, I've swim a lot since I was a child and, uh, so many years bodyboarding too. So it helps a lot. Uh, I, I try to swim in the swimming pool, like, uh, three to four times uh, a week. And, uh, I like, uh, in Japan, the water is really cold. So I, I, don't, I don't surf that much anymore. Not like, you know, in the past, it's like, never mind if it was winter or, or whatever. I, I, the kind of guy, if the, the oceans are big or small, I will be surfing, I will be in the water every day. But now I'm 42 years old, I don't surf that often anymore. And I also, uh, as a professional photographer, I'm very busy with uh, like a, like a back office work because I'm I'm a, I work mainly by myself. I have my girlfriend who gives me some assistance. She's also a photographer, but she's also very busy with her photography work. You know, she works for a company, so she has to be in the studio many days of the week. So, like. Uh, when people see like uh, the photos on Surfline or or in the magazine, like uh, I do several articles for so many different magazines, it requires a lot of work, you know, behind that. So I spend so many long hours behind the computer screen and uh, more more than before. So. That's something that uh, takes a lot of my time, but uh, I try to keep swimming. And uh, like uh, when I when I close home, I try to use the bicycle besides the car. Uh, I like to go for a walk and do some little run, but I'm not I'm not that in that shape so much anymore. Like uh, if you if you if I stand up, you can see I have like a my beer belly and kind of stuff. But uh, I think the thing that helps me more at the moment is like I'm 42 years old now. 
I think more than be fit or being training is the experience I had achieved, not only at pipeline, but uh, any ocean situation, because, you know, it's like a, over 30 years doing bodyboard is another, like, let's say, 12 years doing water photography. So you learn the shortcuts, you know, you start to learn the, the shortcuts, you know, sometimes like uh, the way I approach pipeline right now, you know, going perfect timing and, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, you can read it, you know, like from the outside, the waves are very big, but it's not worth to be in the water. You know, sometimes it's, it's you get, you get better footage, you know, flying a drone or getting a sick lineup photo, you know, so you, you, you learned, you know, it's like, a, I can see like a, the very well-known guys uh, in Hawaii, like, I would say like Zach Noy and Brent Buman, they are not, old, you know, when, when they are younger, they are all the time in the water, but these days, you know, you, you can see, you know, they are very picking, you know, when to swim. And I think I got in that stage, in that stage as well, like, uh, I, I'm very clever, you know, I use very clever, like uh, decisions to when I should be in the water and when I shouldn't. Interesting. So when you first start out, you're a little more manic, you're all over the place, you don't really know what to do. And as you you put your time in, you understand how the the world is, and then you can choose your sword yeah. as, as appropriate. Very, very it's amazing advice. Uh, so the the thing I'd like to, to speak to next is uh, something about um, your art artistic process, specifically how you as an artist uh, go through your work and handle um, self-criticism. You know, you, you don't, you're the one who decides what the world sees. Uh, you're the one who decides um, uh, what pictures to shoot when you shoot them. Um, what What is it about uh, the internal process that you can speak to uh, specifically when in, um, dealing with internal criticism. Okay, so I don't know. I'm I'm always I always feel that I, I could I could do better. I always have this feeling, you know. And uh, sometimes even this season now, due to COVID, you know. Uh, Fortunately, I had some jobs, but uh, if I compare to the season before, I had less jobs. So I had more time to working on my own, on my own, like a uh, own satisfaction photos, like uh, the photos that I, I really feel I wanted to do. So how can I say? Uh, uh, let me organize my my feet. Uh, it's like a. It's it's it's, it's like a. How can I say? Uh, I always I I always see I wanna improve my myself, but um, more than a art photo, you know. I'm I'm like a I. I get a jobs, so I think every client uh, is different, you know? So I think that's one of the secrets to you succeed on professional photography is not to take photos of who you want, you know? Like, I'm, it's to delivery what the client wants. You know, so when I'm taking photos, you know, uh, when I take a photo for surf line, you know, I know what what surf line needs. I know what they they want to show to show to their public. So I do more like a surf line approach, you know, like a clear lineup showing the size of the wave, showing very clear who the surfer is because you know that is sponsors, you know, and everything. But if you are going to take a photo for a more surf art kind of magazine, you know, maybe you are going to do like a blur 
you know, you're going to take a low speed photo, you know, it's like, a, I think of the secret to succeed in professional photography, not only surfing, but uh, all photography, like uh, from the experience I have, it's like uh, you have to adjust your, your shooting or what you, the, the things you're going to shooting to the client you have that day. I think that's why, you know, like, uh, I think I am, I am not the best guy. Definitely, I'm not the best guy. But uh, I think I am one of the best guys on delivering what the clients ask for. I think that's, that's the, that's the, like I say, like, that's my secret to can keep, you know, stable, like a, in the market. I can see like a many guys, you know, complaining, you know, oh, you know, there is no money on surf photography, you know, it's hard, you know, and oh, I have a dead sick photo of that guy and nobody cares, nobody buys, you know. But uh, okay, you know, your style maybe can fit one, one, one kind of segment, one kind of client, one kind of people, but uh, you have to be able to produce what your clients wish to have. And the, when you are shooting like a free, like, a, like a, this is when I had a lot of free times, no, then you try to put you know, your own taste, your own art. And uh, I don't have a, a right answer for that because I'm still looking for this answer. You know, Every time when I'm in the water, when I'm shooting, I'm trying to do better than I did before. I'm trying to, to be more creative, to do something, but uh, I don't know because it, it's very hard to say because like uh, some photos that I really love, like, uh, oh man, you know, this is a masterpiece of photography, you know, like uh, from my concept and uh, they usually don't sell. <laughs> Interesting. Do you know, it's like, uh, it's 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 amazing like uh like uh you know hey you know this is the best photo ever you know like uh, this this season now I, I have a sick photo of a guy and then uh, i showed i sent to every every people i work with you know nobody just didn't care about it you know and they picked you know some other photos that i was just like uh, averaged for me interesting so, yeah, it's well. Well, uh, you know, a couple months ago we talked about possibly getting you it, it, with a few shots on the Global Surf Gallery webpage. Um, maybe, uh, maybe we could put a few of these uh, photos you're speaking of that re are really close to your heart um, on there uh, for sale here in the future uh, after this this call, and we'll, we can uh, see what the what the, the the marketplace is because I believe so much of this is is the marketplace and. Uh, you, the artist, you know, if, if you feel it, it, it might be um, a really good fit for the audience to kind of check out and maybe they want a piece of their own in their house from you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and uh, since the beginning, I found very interesting your your project and everything, but uh, the tiny you asked me, I was just like a... Oh, you're on your way to Hawaii? Yeah, yeah. The way to end, before, and, you know, before Hawaii, just like a the last shootings of the year in Japan and the tax paper timing, and timing. everything was just like, a, but now that I, now I'm, I'm back here and I'm planning all the schedule for this year, I have more time. Cool. And yeah, let's discuss about it. Yeah, we'll sure. talk offline about that, but um, a couple more questions yeah. uh, real quick. So what, what is it that, that you've not conquered yet uh, professionally that that you're just like biting at the chops to, to conquer that you you really want to get to what it what is it something on the horizon that you're just you're just hungry for mm, well some things like uh uh like uh that i mm, like a photographer, that's like a, the way I see, you know, to see if you are a successful, because you know, now there is Instagram, you know, so one guy can, can get very popular and get uh, 
money and get uh, followers and get, you know, from not for not being a professional photographer even once, you know, and uh, I, I don't blame that. I think that's really fine. And uh, there are some of those guys that I follow and I enjoy following them very much. But uh, my, my concept, because I'm old guy, you know, to, to show that you are like a real professional photographer, you have to win a lot of photo contests and uh, get many cover shots. That's, that's how I, I measure, you know, how, how good you are, you know, it's like, uh, and the, the cover shot sometimes doesn't need to be the best photo, but it has to be related what uh, the editorial is talking that time, you know. So sometimes you see, like, uh, I'm not talking about myself, I'm talking about like any, any photographer. You see a cover, ah, you know, why this photo is in the cover, you know, shouldn't be in the cover this photo. But uh, for sure, it has some, some reason for, be, for the photo being there. And uh, so, like, uh, in, the, in Japan, like, I got uh, my, my, my photos, like, uh, every, all the major surf magazines, like, uh, I got a cover shot off then already. I got in Brazil, but uh, I never got a one in the U.S. That's something that I always, you know, like, uh, always bother me. It's like... Uh, Ah, do you know, it's like, a, come on, man, the, like, a, when, I see, when I see, like, the, the Surfer's Journal, I think I, it's, it's the only print mag still running in the U.S., I think, and uh, in Japan, I am the main, the main photographer for them, for the Japanese issue, like, I am the, I don't know how to do, how it's, it's like, a, but I'm, I am kind of the main photographer for them here in Japan. So, like, uh, you know, and uh, sometimes I, hey, you know, I'd like to see my photo in the cover of the Surfers Journal. <laughs> you know, that's, that's something, you know, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, it's, it's, that's some obsession I have. Like, uh, even the photo I told you, I didn't post on my Instagram, I didn't show to many people. I message them and say, do you know, this photo, you know, should run as a cover <laughs> or do you know, or, yeah. or don't run, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's something uh, I, I, I would like to, I didn't get yet and uh, I would like to, to get it. Well, I, I wish you the best of luck with that. And I, I know you're, you're on your way to doing so because your work is just so, so incredible. Um, last question before I, I let you go. Um, what advice do you have for uh, uh, the kids out there, the, the young um, at heart even, uh, that want to get into surf photography and this world of, uh, of water aesthetics and capturing uh, the beauty the ocean holds? Well, I think first of all, you know, it's like uh, uh, you need to have in your mind, you know, what's, what's your... What do you want to do, you know, if you're surf photography, you know, do you want to do it as a hobby, as an Instagrammer, or you want to be professional, like make your living from that, you know, from, from water photography or from surf photography, or what any, you know, it's like uh, what I can see now these days, you know, like uh, the kids that uh, grow up with the digital generation, like a uh, their first, very first camera is a digital one. They can't measure the value of the photo. You know, they think a photo is just a photo, you know, it's like a, they don't mind for give it for free for a brand or for someone or whatever, you know. So, but, and even if you don't want to be a professional photographer, you know, even if you want to be an Instagram or an influencer or whatever, you know, I'd like to, to tell the young people, you know, your, your photo has value, you know. You can, you can change the photo for money, you know, and the, in my opinion, getting paid by likes is not, uh, it's not like, uh, it's not good enough. 
So my first advertising, you know, uh, my, my first advice for the people, you know, to people who wanna be a photographer or sell photographer or whatever, uh, charge for your photos and charge, try to charge it as fair as you can. Uh, since I started, from the time I started surf photography and now, so many guys, they came in and came out, came in, you know, guys come and go, come and go all the time. Because, you know, uh, to you keep doing it, you know, it costs money. You know, you have to buy a new camera, you, you, you need to get a new housing, uh, you need to have money for go traveling to make new new photos or new videos or whatever. So it's all costs money, you know, even if it's your hobby, you know, it costs money. So if you can get money from that, why not? You know, I'm, you know, like a, some other photographers, they don't, they, they don't like me because I'm kind of, oh, you just think about money. You know? Hey, but uh, that's my job, you know, and how can I think different, you know? So my approach is a little bit different. I know now it's like a Instagram era, you know, everybody wants, you know, much viral the photo goes, much as the well-known surfers publish your photo, you know, you get more likes. But uh, myself, I'm still thinking like the old, the old way, you know, like uh, I, I don't care, you know, if you are the, super well-known surfer in the world you know if you want to have my stuff you have to pay for that you know like i have i have maybe i have a got a in the insides maybe i got a bad reputation whatever you know but uh many i can say you know many ct guys there you know hey you know i want to Hey, let me post this for no man. You know, please show to your sponsor. You know, and uh, if yourself, you know, if you wanna, if you like it so much, you know, you 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 can pay for the Instagram usage for me too. You know, but I, I just cannot give you for free. You know, so and that's my like a, from day one until now. I keep the same. Of course, some some guys that you work more often or you have a good relation with their sponsor brand. As like, a, you know, uh, I work very tight with Patagonia here in Japan and anywhere I go, you know? So of course, you know, the, the, the relation, you know, to give a photo here and there is different because, you know, we, are, we build something together. We work together for the year, but you know, it's not because you are the, go to champ or, or you have a million of followers on Instagram and hey give my photo you know I you know to, to me it doesn't work this way I I think you know you, you have to sell your photos <laughs> well, well said like a true businessman and and that really uh kind of spells out the difference between the amateur and the professional there well, I won't say that I won't say that because you know some guys I, I I know some guys some of the guys who are kind of rival you know they do they they do a different approach you know they like a, they put their photos all over and everybody tag them or you know and they get more followers I don't know because I don't have a huge number of followers like as my my rivals but uh, I. I prefer to exchange my footage for money. That's that's how I started, and that's the, what I believe, you know. And uh, yeah, that's my first advice. And second advice is like a uh, more at work, you know, like uh, try to go out there and uh, try to do something unique, you know. Try to to get your own style. Uh, I have some kids that uh, came to talk to me in Hawaii because uh, like uh, same, so because I work very often with Surfline, I think. So people, they, they, they see my phone in Hawaii, I think 
because they don't see the Japanese media. So probably from Surfline because they want to work off on that. And then they come to me on the beach to talk. And then how should I do to get a, be a professional photographer and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and I think uh, if you keep doing it you know, constantly and uh, trying to be, not to, you don't need to try to be better than the best guy, but you try to be better than yourself a little bit day by day, uh, you, you are going to get somewhere. And uh, once you get somewhere and you can, you know, you can make it work out and you can become a full-time job to you too. You know, it's like, a, that's my, 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 my recommendation. Like a, do the best you can, you know? And I, I think if you do something constantly, and uh, if you have a goal, you know, and if you keep doing it, you know, you will get it. And if you don't get it exactly the way you think in the beginning, you are going to get somewhere, you know, in the middle of the way, maybe you change the route, but you get somewhere. <laughs> I've heard it said from the Japanese, actually, that when you swing the sword 1,000 times, that's how you become the samurai. And I, I believe that that speaks to this game of, uh, of life and water photography and just doing anything that um, takes practice and time to get to get good at. So um, that 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 is uh, uh, incredible yeah. advice. Yes. Yeah, I, I, when I first started in photography, like uh, one guy told me, uh, uh, a older, a senior photographer told me something like, uh, "Your first ten thousand photos." you suck for sure. So, you know, it's like, uh, so just keep shooting, you know, keep shooting, 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 and, you know, and uh, read the light. I think that's the most important thing, you know, like, uh, because like uh, these days, like if you are good on Photoshop, you can do like uh, everything, you know, like uh, myself, uh, the photoshops on my photos are very, very few, you know, it's like a more about saturation and uh, contrast and a little bit brighter and, uh, and darker, you know, that's all I do on Photoshop. So I try to get the photo uh, when I'm taking the photo, you know, I don't think much about the process later. So I think not to read the light, is very, very important. It makes all the difference because photography, if you go back to the, to the photography means like a draw with light. That's the meaning of uh, photography. If you go to the back in Greek or, you know, photography, you know, so Beautiful. read the light, try to understand the light. Beautiful. Well, we're going to end on, on that note, Pedro. Th this has been an incredible, enlightening, inspiring conversation. And I, I, um, I really can't thank you enough for taking this long time to tell us your story and uh, how your, your process has developed over the years. And um, we, we just wish you uh, the best of success here in America and just are going to be calling the Surfers Journal daily to get that cover shot because uh, you, you deserve it. <laughs> Yeah, I hope one day, like before I retire. <laughs> it, it, it will happen. I feel it. I feel it. Well, um, <laughs> that's it. That's it, dude. I appreciate it so much. Okay. Thank you. Wow. That was extremely inspirational. Pedro, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us about your passion and how you've gotten to be where you are today, shooting the aesthetic of water. Until next time, I'm Sean Rutke. This has been Speaking From Water.